Welcome to Maneuvering Music, a vocal music podcast based at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. My name is Carrie Sullivan, and I am pleased to be your host for today's episode. Today, we'll be talking about music education as a major and how it can be applied to your future. So we've talked a lot about performance on the show, and we've also talked about composition, but something we haven't talked about yet has been music education. When you think of music education, you likely think of elementary, middle, or high school teachers teaching choir or a band or a general music class, and to an extent you're right, but there is quite a bit more to it than that. And I'd like to have some music education majors, some real live music ed majors on the show today to tell us what it's really like to be a music ed major and how their past experiences in music have shaped what they want to do with their degree once they graduate. So today we have Kat Ullery and Josh Spencer, two music ed majors at Miami, one vocal, one instrumental, to talk to us about just that. All right, so here we are. Um, we're gonna, as I've just mentioned in the introduction, we're gonna be talking about uh, music education at Miami University, not the act of educating one in music, but rather um, the curriculum for, for teaching people to teach people how to music. So we have Kat and Josh with us today. If you guys just wanna go ahead and introduce yourselves, I don't care who goes first. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Katherine Ellery. I am a sophomore vocal music education major, and I also have a musical theater minor. And I am uh, Josh Spencer, and I'm, a, I'm also a sophomore uh, music education major. I play trombone. Awesome. So, gosh, where do we even start? So, <laughs> I am a... Oh, there goes the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, audience at home about that particular moment. Um, so I'm a music performance major. Um, so I don't have that much insight about what music ed is really about. So what to you guys, this is a really broad way to start the episode, but what <laughs> is music education to you? Um, I can go first. To me, music ed, first and foremost, is sharing my love and teaching my love to the future generation of musicians, whether they do it professionally or they go to college or even if they just do it in grade school. I think just having that music education and having that background is one of the most important things in the world. For me, I, uh, I think it goes a, a bit beyond just music, you know, um, like through my experiences like I've learned a lot about a whole lot of things through music you know um that sort of relationship you have in, with the, like those in um mu like musical ensembles and or the uh director themselves you know uh you can learn a lot in that and I think um like it's really important uh to both I mean both the music, of course, I, I think that a lot of cognitive and social um, stuff can be learned from that, but I also think that it's very important in a lot of other ways. 
Yeah, like music education can be applied to just about any other aspect of your life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty... The, the term music education is pretty expansive because there's just so many ways to teach music and so many facets of music to be taught. Um, so, you know, it's very general and very broad and therefore it can be applied to pretty much anything. So I know you guys take like general music classes um, and you also take classes that are specifically about music education. Do you take just regular like education courses like with the other sort of education majors? Yeah, we, uh, uh, I know in our requirements, there at least, there's at least like an EDP class and an EDL yeah. class, which is just general um, teaching of like the cognitive kind of stuff, the uh, theories of like education and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I'm in an educational psychology class right now. And then, um, so those are like through the Department of Education, but I also take classes that are specific to voice music ed. Like I'm in a class that's called Choral Practicum that is very specific to, you know, what you might be doing as a high school choir director or a middle school choir director. And I think, um, you know, having all of that knowledge is really beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. So then when you're in those classes that are just about, you know, education in general and not about music, um, how, you know, how do you take that information and apply it to your music education knowledge? So, like, what, what takeaways do you get from those general education classes? I think those classes are more so, like, um, learning, because, I mean, teaching is a skill, you know. Uh, I think that that's more so learning the, uh, like, just general things on diversity, on mm-hmm. uh, being able to... Uh, have that connection almost with your students and um, being able to actually teach what you know because you can know as much as you want about music but if you're going to be a an educator you have to be able to get that across right and like I I always say that there's a difference between a music educator and like a music director a music conductor because typically like conductors and directors don't have um they might, but typically they don't have an education degree. They have a performance degree. So they don't, um, they weren't required to take any of these education classes, any of these like um, classes that teach about um, how a child's brain develops when they're young and, you know, each age, what things they're learning and what they can learn at certain ages. There's just so much to it. Um, it's, it's really interesting like to me specifically because there's just you know we're learning about all this stuff in my educational psychology class and like I was a child once I did all these things but I (laughs) I I I like never knew what it was I couldn't put a name to it and now knowing that I can put a name to it with these specific stages is just really beneficial and real quick and when you say the um like conductors and such do you mean like for professional kind of deals yeah like more professional i feel like for them though it's a a lot more uh they sort of just expect you to know like Mm -hmm. you've learned through other people this is where you apply it yeah 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 totally um so what um like age level or grade level are you guys kind of more most interested in teaching or really trying to specialize in I would absolutely love to purely do high school. Um, I could do middle school, like 6th, 7th, 8th grade. But for me personally, like, I don't feel like I would have the energy to teach elementary. Like, some people have it, some people don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, no, I really want to do high school. I want to do vocal ensemble and show choir and be involved in the theater department. Like, I, I, I'm that's something I can really see myself loving. Personally, um, like uh, going into uh, the major and everything, I was dead set on high school. Uh, Just for the fact that uh, we'd be able to play more advanced music and more just generally good sounding and diverse music. But I noticed that like a huge part of the 
um, outside of like music stuff like in middle school there are so many things that are just going on in your life that like truly make you who you are you know so I, I'm like that interests me a lot so I, I certainly wouldn't be upset teaching middle schoolers because I could sort of um, be there to be like yeah no that's not weird you're a middle schooler you know <laughs> I, f- I feel like there's a lot of negativity around middle schoolers. Like, oh, you don't want to teach middle school. Like, middle schoolers are bad, bad news. It's like, they're really not. Like, they're just they're, trying to discover themselves. We've all been there. We we've all been there. We were all kids, you know. <laughs> but, like, I think being there to sort of help in the, in, through music, I mean, that was when I found out that I was good at it, you know. And when I found out, I enjoyed it. So... And that was with uh, an awful, terrible director. But, like, even then, I, like, I still loved it. And I feel if um, someone does have that, uh, someone that's, like, decent is able to help in all these things going on through that time, um, because there's so much development going on in their lives and everything, I feel like that would bring a lot of kids to really understand and enjoy music in general yeah I mean I definitely agree with you Josh I think that um at least drawing from who I was when I was in middle school which you know is not somebody (laughs) I'd ever like to be again but you know we can all say the um, same thing you know it was a tough time for all of us but I think um music was so important to me in middle school and I I also experienced that like you know late middle school early high school when I kind of realized like oh this music is like a thing that I'm good at like this Mm -hmm. is something that I could um, continue doing either you know as a hobby or as a profession in my life because this is something that I that I stand out um, as being good at Um, I also think that you know middle school children would probably be some of the most interesting and like most rewarding to teach just because like one they're just such interesting little people mm-hmm. like yeah. they just say things and you're like i guess like okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know there's that but then there's also you know you you really during this period of time in these kids lives when they're you know going through it at the most and like you know they're really starting to develop physically and mentally and you know school starting to become more difficult are really going through it and as a music educator you kind of have this safe haven for them mm-hmm. you know like you you know choir or band or you know just general music class is like might be somebody's favorite class of the day because they feel like they can express themselves where they can't in math or science and it, it can even be just a general like kind of escape you know because like, right. i mean like uh, in at my school of set especially, there's a lot of stuff going on at home for the kids. Um, just I, I I come from a smaller school in a smaller town, and it, I mean a lot of the kids. I mean parents are aren't together. Mine weren't. Um, j- problems at home, you know. It's an escape to from all the crazy stressful stuff you know and I think it's important for a teacher to realize that and to facilitate some sort of place to get away from that yeah it's like the like I'm and at least in my grade school years like my music class was my safe haven <laughs> oh yeah I mean me too I mean I also went to a um a school district in grade school where the majority of the students who attended were um, minority students, you know, people of color. And, you know, we could have a whole discussion about, you know, structural violence and all the things that were going on in the community that many of these kids were living on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, a lot of people have to say about middle schoolers, like, you know, oh, they just act out, like, they'll talk during class, or they'll, like, you know, 
do these little rebellion things that I got caught up in when I was in middle school where everybody would decide we're not going to sing when she cues us in and then <laughs> Carrie's the only one singing and then she cries in her bed later and like you know all that <laughs> yeah that really happened happened more than more than once actually you know Aww. we love that middle school trauma but um I mean really I think if you can find a way to resonate with these kids and and show them something that um will will make them feel included and excited um i think that that can be a way to help them you know make better choices because a lot of bad behavior comes from you know i want attention or Mm -hmm. i'm having trouble and i'm upset and i want to you know get this feeling out this is a really long tangent just to say, <laughs> you know, like music educators have this very, um, and really all art educators, but especially in music, have this really unique kind of um, position where they can, you know, take kids out of their reality for a short amount of time. Whereas, mm-hmm. you know, in like math, it's not as easy to do that. Well, I like, I talk about this a lot. So um, typically, at least where I went to school, you had a different set of teachers for each grade. You know, you had your fourth grade science, fifth grade, you know, et cetera. But the music teacher was the same Mm -hmm. for the majority of my grade school years and for my high school years. Um, So unlike, you know, your fourth grade math teacher, your music teacher you have for so much longer and you can create um, such a more like a deeper relationship with them and they can really get to see you grow. And it's not just like, okay, I teach you math for a year, bye. It's like, no, like you're my student for four, five, six years. And then you go off to high school or you graduate from high school, go to college. Um, And I think that that in itself is also really unique about music ed and just kind of like, um, you know, music ed or visual art teachers or even like, like, we had a computer lab at my school. I don't know if that's, like, a common thing. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, like the specials teachers. Right. And in that same right, I mean, like, in my own experience, you know, like, I mean, they see you grow up, you know, and they're a part of that. Um, and like, for me, my band director was a huge part of the reason that I am the person I am today, you know. Um, he throughout all of my high school career from like sophomore year onwards uh, from the time he said hey you ever considered like music as a career I was like kind (laughs) of like you can do that (laughs) yeah and from then on it was just a constant teaching of teaching it was a teacher he was my teacher teacher from like then on and just general life skills of like compassion and cool (laughs) yeah not me being in like an open study room right now anyway continue Uh, and just like general life and social skills of how to live and be good to others you know that was a huge part of my because where I come from there's a lot of just general uh, like bad you know and uh, he he actually went to Miami as well and he came back to, uh, or he went into a little middle of nowhere town with where I happened to be and uh, completely showed me this huge expansive world outside of this tiny little nowhere, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, a lot can come from your, you know, middle and high school music teachers. I mean, actually, my my high school choir director also went to Miami. So, you know, mm-hmm. I think, you know, just maybe the best music educators come from Miami. I don't know. but <laughs> I'm um, just saying. <laughs> you know what? And maybe that's the truth, and I don't really know what to say about it. But, um, you know, she, she was uh, – there was a lot of moments with the with the music teachers when I was in in school and not that any of them were like bad or anything or that there was Mm -hmm. any drama um but they just moved around a lot so I didn't really have um I kind of almost had where like I had the same music teacher from middle school through high school but like only for half of middle school that's a lot of words to say (laughs) um (laughs) you know I had um different directors in middle and high school but they all had different impacts on my life so I mean um my my high school choir director 
was the reason that I'm actually here studying music. You know, my freshman year in high school, I was still like, oh, music is fun, but it's a hobby. I like being in the musical, but it's a hobby. Um, and I'm going to go to med school. I was like, I'm going to go to med school. I'm going to become a doctor. Like, that was what I was going to do. Um, even though I hate science, I was going to become <laughs> a doctor. So, um, yeah, probably a good thing that I didn't do that. But, I mean, one day I was, I was eating lunch by myself in the back of the auditorium, as you do when you're a freshman in high school. Mm-hmm. And um, my, my choir teacher, she came up to me, and she pulled me into her office, and she said, hey, there's this guy um, who's – you know, the music director, once again, a music educator at this church, um, five minutes from your house, and he will give you free voice lessons if you sing in the church choir every week. And I was like, that sounds terrifying. I don't ever <laughs> want to hear anybody sing. Any, I don't want anybody to ever hear me sing with my voice by myself ever. But I said yes. And I still remember that first voice lesson. Um, it was terrifying. Mm-hmm. But it's because of that that I eventually realized this is literally what I want to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. Like, right. you know, it was a music educator, obviously, who taught me how to sing and taught me how to perform and helped me, you know, apply to school and everything. But it was that high school choir director who gave me that opportunity. And that's why I'm here. So I really, you know, all that to say, I really think um, music educators are so influential in people's lives. And, you know, they change people's, change people's trajectory mm-hmm. in yeah. a really awesome way. It was actually, like, where I got my start in music. So um, you, you know my dad, Carrie. He's the bass professor at Miami. Mm-hmm. And so I remember when I was, like, six – he took me and my brother to this concert that he was doing because they were going to have graders afterwards, free graders at the concert. There you, there you go. <laughs> so my dad was like, you know, you can, you can come watch me play bass and then you'll get ice cream. And little six-year-old me was like, that sounds amazing. And I still remember that concert. And I was like, this is so cool. And then I remember being in third grade and my mom was like, oh, there's, there's a church choir, because I went to a Catholic school, there's like, she was like, oh, there's a church choir, like, you know, let's sign you up for the church choir, like, that'll be a fun thing to do, and like, eight-year-old me was a savage, and was like, no, it's on Monday nights, I don't want to do that, and my mom was like, <laughs> oh, you're doing it, and I wanted to quit for that first year, and then my mom was just like, no, you, you're gonna keep doing it, and then, um, and then I fell in love with it, and then I got to high school and said, hey, I want to major in music, and my parents just went, oh, crap, what did we do? <laughs> well, I think all of our parents had that. Like, my dad said, I just wanted you to go through band because I did. I didn't think that I'd do this. <laughs> uh, you know what? I think that's really funny because my parents were very, like, um, it took a while for me to decide I wanted a major in music. I was mm-hmm. probably sophomore, junior in high school by the time I kind of figured it out, but um you know they were like they had already heard me perform and they were like that's awesome like you know we'll support you we just want you to go to college so if this means you'll go to college and graduate then go right ahead bud Mm -hmm. but I still have like family members and like family friends who will see me and I'll tell them what I'm doing and they're like oh so (laughs) what are you gonna do with that like I mean I even get that sometimes. People, and it's you, you, you think it's weird. It's like you say music education. Like, that sounds pretty self-explanatory. But, like, all of my family, when I was like, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna go to Miami. I'm going to major in music education. Um, and my aunt was just like, oh, oh, are you now? And I was like, oh. yeah, like, I love it. And then even still, she thinks that, be- that because I got a 92 in honors chemistry that I should be a chemistry major instead <laughs> of a music major. Oh, that's really funny. (laughs) If I may interrupt, what ice cream did you end up getting? Oh, God, I don't remember. How was it? It was Grater's. It was amazing. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, all Grater's (laughs) ice cream is amazing. Duh. Um, No question. On on my side, like, there was that little pool of, hey, you don't make, like, a whole lot of money being a teacher, which, I mean, we can go into a whole other conversation (laughs) for that, but... Like, eventually it was like, they they found out, yeah, there's no pulling him back from this. <laughs> there's, <laughs> he's already gone he's, too far down the hole. There's no going back now. And they were like, you know what? Like, you're good at what you do. 
uh, I support it, you know, and I mean, for my dad, getting scholarships in that regard definitely helped his opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, my parents were always supportive, but it was just like with my dad also being a professional musician, it was very much like, uh, okay. <laughs> um, I mean, my, my dad went to the Eastman School of Music and then he went to grad school at CCM. Like he is an astounding musician and he, mm-hmm. he plays bass and I'm just like, I don't know how you do that. Um, <laughs> but he, he was actually music ed for a week in his undergrad he was in one ed class, and then he said, uh, nope, <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it definitely was suggested to me, like, hey, you'll be more likely to get into your dream college if you apply in, like, as a music ed major and then switch to performance. And I was like, hmm. both of you to assume that I would want to spend one day as a music education major. <laughs> there's anything wrong with it um i just personally hate explaining things to people because i'm Mm. terrible at explaining things to people (laughs) see um so the thing is like when you're really good at something sometimes it's really difficult to like because it just comes so naturally for you by that point it's hard to explain You, you almost get like a confusion where it's like hey i don't i can't really match pitch or something like that which is something that i that is a ongoing question for me how do you teach someone to match pitch and i've never gotten an answer for that like because i uh am also a member of the uh glee club at miami and uh, um as you can tell i'm a soprano Uh, (laughs) but um in high school i was in choir for a little bit but that was just so confusing to me because it just it's one of those things that comes natural for me but not others sometimes so like a lot part of being that like sort of teacher is finding the answers to even the like what may be for you the simplest questions you know yeah because like um for for me I my my spark into music ed specifically was really not anything to do with music I assistant directed a play at my school and I was like I really liked that that was really fun but I also love music I can do both (laughs) and that was just really really exciting to me and um you know there there are certain times where I'm just like this this is kind of really scary or intimidating or this that and the other but then you know I think about why I'm doing it and why I'm doing music ed is because I love music and I want others to love music too it like it just comes down to that and if you've got that passion if you've got that inside of you everything like you'll struggle but it'll all come together you'll figure it out (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's the gen oh I'm sorry go ahead no go ahead oh I mean it's just that general like I don't want to say willpower, but like, if you want to, I mean, yeah, if you want to do something, then you just keep on trucking. I guess. <laughs> yeah, you know? And sometimes it just comes down to that. Um, <laughs> so you know, just very existential questions aside, um, what kind of like what what is a day or like a semester or like. What is your life like as a music ad major? What do you get up to? Busy. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. All right. <laughs> like being in the department of music itself is a lot of is a lot of classes and a lot of credit hours and a lot of work and a lot of practicing. If you don't have 20 plus credit hours then you're not a music major. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> right. Something's wrong there. Like um it's you know, as some people agree with this, some people don't agree with this, but there's that kind of, like, if you're a music ed, you're kind of, it's like a double major built into one major, because you are learning, you are basically a, a, an education major, because you're taking all of those classes, but you're also music, and that's the, I mean, I, most of my classes are music classes, um, or theater classes for my minor, but um, this semester, I have 13 classes, and Tuesdays and Thursdays are the days that where I have six. And then 
I'm in the opera and I'm a part of Stage Left and I'm a part of the New Wave Theater Organization and I'm an university. Like, I'm just, I'm very involved in a lot of different things, but it sometimes it's like my life is crazy. You don't need to add on more, but then I'm like, I want to do more. <laughs> right. There's some more out there, you know, for me. I want to do it, but then your brain is like, listen, <laughs> no. I simply have not enough neurotransmitters for all of this. <laughs> like, you know, very that. And in, in, in that same right, like, uh, I mean, we sort of, I mean, we've still got to be the best we can in our, like, instrument or voice or anything, you know. Like, it's it's not entirely just the education part, because, I mean, in our theory classes, it's the same expectations. In our lessons, it's the same, if not more sometimes uh I, I won't i won't say more i won't say more it's about this they expect the same of you because it's just well you're a music major and you need to be good At you, uh, well, all you of have this. to be better <laughs> than everyone you're teaching you know mm-hmm. um but like and we just have to work really hard on that and um i, I know there's a lot of uh I, with lack of better words, like cross classes almost with uh, performance um, in a sense that, I mean, like functional piano. I know that Miami has like one of the most uh, intensive piano courses mm-hmm. at, that a college. Really? Can, yeah. It feels like that, but I wasn't sure I if agree. that was just us. <laughs> that was just like a, <laughs> is this just us or is this like a thing? <laughs> Yikes. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, well, but I mean, the other thing is like, Carrie, you know, this as a, as a fellow vocalist, um, the one thing that I struggle with is that I can't practice four hours a day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will literally kill my voice. And, you know, I know some instrumentalists who, you know, will go to the practice room at 3am and stay there until they're 830. And I'm like, whoa, I'm like, what? Like, if I tried to do that, I would literally just like rip my vocal cords out like even like as a brass player my (laughs) my lips wouldn't work after like four well after maybe like six but still yeah I mean you know I used to play clarinet in in middle and high school and then I quit because I hated it but um (laughs) you know I I it would be my cue to stop practicing when like the condensation on the inside of the clarinet starts dripping down my leg then I'm like okay we're done but like you know that, that happens pretty quickly, so, I mean, you know, four <laughs> hours of just spit everywhere. I don't know about that. As a trombonist, that's just life. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really if... like, I went to my first ever, like, recital of trombone. I saw, um, um, you know, Jaime do his, oh, his like, faculty that. recital last year. And I thought, like, it I so found good. it so very fascinating that, like, just like in the musical interludes, like during the piece, just like while the piano was playing, he just opens a spit valve and empties it out on the carpet. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense, but I never would have thought. It doesn't help that he has a full spray bottle at every corner of every room that he's ever in, that he, every time he finishes playing, he pulls a slide down and then starts spraying it like rigorously like you know what but maybe that's why he's so good at trombone he just knows the secrets so (laughs) i mean perhaps it's just that but i mean yeah i mean um i think that's definitely a very unique challenge for vocalists is that um it's it's you know obviously there's there's that muscle fatigue for for instrumentalists and i definitely would not want to play a brass instrument for that freaking long Mm -hmm. but then you know as a you know it's hard when your body is the instrument and it's like you know what i ate yesterday um determines how i'm going to perform today like that Mm -hmm. kind of thing and you know it's hard enough as as a performance major where basically all i do is learn about music theory and go practice like those are the two things (laughs) that i the two very broad categories of what i do but like adding on to that trying to learn like about little people and like how to (laughs) tell them how to match pitch like I just that's so far out of my realm I just don't Mm -hmm. even know and even going off of like a lot of the stuff we've talked about like there's a lot of 
um, connection almost in that, in the fact that like, we're all musicians here, you know, like while our track is going on to like teach that music, like we all, all three of us still have that set, this sort of, um, musical thing, I guess, Just you know what I mean? <laughs> Very right. much, yes. Like, even though Josh and I are Ed in your performance, like, we still do most of the same stuff, and we're still, ex- at least, I know some other schools, that it's kind of like, mm. oh, well, if you're Ed, then you don't have to be as good as the performance majors, but I feel like at Miami, it's very much like, no, we hold you to the same standard, like, you are expected to, you know, be at the same level technically and academically as everyone else. Like, you don't get to slide by if you're, if you're an Ed major. And that kind of brings me to, like, another topic of, like, I feel like in general there's this sort of assumption that people who do music ed are like, oh, well, you're just doing ed because you weren't cut out to be a performer. And I just want to, like, debunk that. Like I don't like that particular sentence. I've heard that so many times, and it just boggles my mind. Because the other thing is, when I auditioned for college... I did apply to certain vocal performance programs and I got in, but I chose Ed because I, I loved it and I was more passionate about it. Like, I didn't choose Ed because I wasn't good enough to be a performance major. And that just like, a lot of people think like that and a lot of people look down on Ed majors. And it's like, you wouldn't be a musician if it weren't for music educators. So like <laughs> exactly, and I, 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 if it was that way, then they would call it good music majors and not good music majors. <laughs> but it's not that. It's they. It's performance and education, which are two very different focuses. Mm-hmm. You know, if all you're focusing on is performance, then all you're learning about is performance. But if you're focusing on education, you know, you've got the performance aspect, but also the education aspect. So it's not like, you know, oh, like education majors are just like performance major wannabe. Like it's not that. It's literally like a different focus of what like what drives you about music. And that's the reason why we're all here is because music drives us. Just like which way? Which way does music drive you? Um, Speaking of job opportunities, so I, I know that each of you have already described kind of like what your, you know, school, like your, what your teaching age would be. Um, have you given any thought as to like what kind of music like initiatives or what kind of things you'd like to teach at that school? So whether that be, you know, uh, directing choir in a band or, you know, doing the, the theater department or doing, you know, music appreciation classes. Like, have you have you given that any thought? I um, I kind of have. We've done a little bit of that in Choral Practicum, kind of like designing our dream program. Um, I know I would love to, like, as primary ensembles, you know, just kind of like um, a big mixed ensemble that anyone can be in just for arts credits or whatever, and then a smaller type of chamber, chamber ensemble. I really want to do show choir. I think that is just so much fun. Um, but then I I feel like, in high, in high schools, there's not a lot of music history classes or music theory or um, just uh, music technology and stuff and things along that line as well. Uh, there's a, been a huge boom of music technology in high schools. Um, I was watching this video of a school in Arizona or Nevada, um, and they got this huge grant for all of this technology equipment. And they're recording albums and they're learning how to mix sound and produce music and that's just so cool if I'm in a school that has the budget for that like I would Hmm. totally want to invest in that type of um class for me um like uh, what I really want to do is is, um sort of uh, especially have like a wind ensemble kind of deal um or uh, if we have an orchestra, my school hadn't, uh, hadn't had one. But if we do, um, sort of go and be able to direct that. My director was the director of music, essentially, at my, in, from middle school onward. And now he's from fifth grade onward. He's just the music teacher. He's the guy. I, and, the music teacher, um, capitalized. Yes. <laughs> 
And, uh, like, he was my choir director. The reason he wanted me in choir, he said, hey, you can read music. You're in choir now. And I said, what? And he, I looked down <laughs> at my schedule list, and I'm in choir now. And you <laughs> but, went, all right, okay. guess I'm going with this. Awesome. Yeah, I was like, okay, cool. Um, but, like, I think what a lot of people sort of misconstrue uh, as music education majors is, like, for example, my director was one of the top of his class. You know, like, I remember when I went into my audition, uh, Gary Speck says, hey, was your director Garrett Smith? And I said, yeah. And he's like, he's one of my favorites. Yeah. And I'm like, that's, that's awesome. You know, but he ended up in a school like mine, you know, still. I think that oftentimes, like, um, and to be fair, you know, people have connections to get into these, like, cooler uh, I won't say cooler, but more opportune places. Um, but a, a good amount of the places that we're going is going to... A realistic image of what we're going to do is something like that. Because that's a good amount of the schools in the U.S. You know, that's a higher percentage than where a lot of people come from, you know. And, like, I mean, I don't want to say I think that I'm... I mean, like, the dream would, like, be to go to one of these schools that is, like, uh, bigger and I can do a whole lot more stuff with. Top-tier public school with a lot of money. <laughs> I wouldn't even say that. I'd say, um, like, in the middle of the road so I can be the main director and also so that, like, um, th there's just not too much as soon as I jump in, you know, because st we've still got to learn. Because they say for teaching... College is the prep. Te like actually getting there, and you you learn for the rest of your career, you know. Um, yeah, there's there's kind of this big misconception that you learn everything in college, and then you do your student teaching, and then you get your first teaching job, and you're you're set, you're good. It's like no, like you know, I don't think it's you ever stop learning. And honestly, I when I try to explain music to someone else or theory or vocal technique, anything like that, it, thinking about it in that way also helps me learn it more and think about things in a different way. If I, if I talk about, oh, you need to open up more space in the back of your throat, like pop a golf ball in your mouth. And they're like, wait, what? And then I'm like, okay, that metaphor doesn't work. Let's try another one. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of have to like go in these circles and continue to find, um, different ways to go about things and continually learn and see what works and see what doesn't. And with that, like, uh, I'd say the, just, I want to say like a big difference between like, uh, performance and ed, but like almost in that learning sense, like, um, for performance, you learn what's, what works for you. And, education you learn what work you learn everything you learn mm. all of those things um at, at least whether that's through uh being taught that or through experience you know having to like find out what works for every individual you right because one one thing that works for one kid might just totally confuse a different kid and that's stressful. <laughs> yeah, but I think you kind of have to be, you know, um, sort of authentic about that, you know, like um, you want to walk right into your school and, you know, be the boss and know everything and, you know, you want to be that. And, and I think that there's a certain element of kind of stepping outside of that and being like, okay, so hey guys, welcome to the first day of school. Um, this is, you know, band class. Uh, if I say something that doesn't make sense, please tell me because I don't want to keep saying something that doesn't make sense, um, you know, um, and, and, and that, that sort of opens up a certain amount of vulnerability, I feel like, because, you know, um, it gives students the, the ability to kind of question your authority and question your teaching ability and, just let you know like hey this thing that you're doing that you think is working isn't working um i've never been in that situation but being the student in that situation i can only imagine how my uh my teachers felt about that i mean 
Um, it's got to be tough. I'm assuming it's got to be tough, but you simply, you know, you have to be the best educator you can be to every student, not just the ones that like resonate with the first thing that you say, I guess. You've got to be really flexible with it. Yeah. You know, just sort of being able to look at a situation and say, okay, you're some kind of maybe similar to how I taught this person and this might work. And if it doesn't, then we're going to try that. You just sort of have to know all the different things that could go wrong that if someone could be doing wrong, like in playing an instrument, at least, um, uh, like in our methods classes, I feel like it helps a lot to, um, see everyone else learning as well because while you, you may pick up saxophone real easy other people won't and you see what they're doing wrong and you you sort of absorb that and say okay i'm going to see that in the future this is how you fix that or you may um be or someone else may be really good at flute but you may be struggling you know and seeing that sort of road to until you can play it um sort of absorbing all those mistakes and realizing that's what you're going to have to teach. Yeah, like it's as depressing as it sounds, it's like you got to think worst case scenario, you know, like um so one of my choral practicum projects we had to design a program, like a choir program. We had to pick a theme and find a bunch of music and um songs in different languages and everything and we had to say like okay what could be an issue with this piece what what's something that might you know cause a discrepancy and you know for me there were some things in my piece where I was like oh this this isn't bad at all like this is fine and then Dr. Bassano looked at it and was like oh there's this whole section and this accidental and this chord and I was like oh my goodness gracious I like there's so much to it yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine. <laughs> I, you know, I I prefer to be on the receiving end of the choral uh, selections from, you know, I don't want to have to be the one to choose them because there's so many, first of all. And second of all, then you got to go off yes. the OMEA list for the different levels. I'm just not about that. I'll just take... <laughs> I'll take the Whitaker. You have so many I'll years take... to do them all. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah, whatever. Forty years worth of for, worth of choral and pieces or band pieces. You know. There's just gonna there's gonna be one huge concert after Carrie is famous, a famous opera singer, and it's just gonna be like every single choral piece ever written performed as a one woman show. Oh please! <laughs> I have to learn how to do like four notes at once. Like how do I sing that with my vocal cords? I'm sure somebody <laughs> in like some remote like country and like some remote island can do it. You know, the the people well, on the islands can singing. do some crazy stuff. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yeah, we'll see about that. I'll keep you guys posted on that uh, <laughs> on that event, uh, but it will be at Carnegie Hall. Just letting you know. Uh, <laughs> so um, we're kind of, we're getting close to uh, to the to the to the backside of this episode here, I think. But I'm I'm wondering uh, door slamming. I'm wondering um, uh, if what what sort of final you know statements you guys have. You know what. Um, what do you think is important for people to know about music ed if they know literally nothing about music ed and you know just kind of what do you want to leave people with it's not easy (laughs) a a lot of I I hear so much about like oh you're a music major like that can't be that hard like my brother who's a chemistry major and then I send him my theory homework and he's like what is that Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's just there's so much more to it than people see on the surface level, basically. (laughs) I think that, like, in that same regard, there is more to it than just what it is, you know? I I think that the biggest half of it is music, and the second half of it is knowing people, you know? And uh, being able to understand experiences and... Um, sort of live through every one of your students' shoes and uh, understand. Uh, and I, I think that's uh, the biggest thing to being able 
to teach and uh, in regards to like actually pursuing it and such like I, I don't know it's <laughs> it's fun yeah it's <laughs> very much it it's been a great experience for me um and my biggest hope is that I can make sure that it it's a great experience for others, you know. I, I think that's the biggest um, goal. To, I, I think that's the goal that we all have, uh, to be able to give this great experience that all of us was given. And it, it, even if we weren't given a great experience, being able to ha give that great experience through such a diverse and wide-reaching um, subject such as music I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, and there's so many things that I've thought about and about my prior music teachers and the things I loved about them and then the things that I didn't quite love about them. And You know, looking back at how they taught me and kind of thinking, you know, this is what I loved and this is what I want to take with me and what I want to try to apply when I teach. And, you know, maybe I, I don't want to take that other part. I didn't, that didn't really work. Um... And that's also extremely important to recognizing your own faults and um, self-evaluation and, and not beating yourself up if something doesn't work. <laughs> you just got to find a new way to do it. Yeah. I mean, you know, being a teacher is probably one of the hardest professions I can think of. Being an educator of any kind and then you throw like the absolute nonsense language that is music <laughs> into it and it becomes a whole other <laughs> you know battleground but I do think that music education is one of the most important aspects of of education for today's children and I think that it can really really impact somebody whether that be on an emotional and personal level or on you know a uh, changing somebody's future and their their trajectory type of way so that's that's what I think as a as somebody who knows nothing about music education that's what I think so do do that with with that what you will um well thank you guys so much Kat and Josh for being on the episode today um, thank you for having us you know what I never thought of doing an episode about just music ed um and when Kat suggested it to me I was like what would we even talk about but here we are an hour later having <laughs> talked about everything I can possibly think about talking about. But yes. So um, we're going to say bye to Kat and Josh now. Bye, Kat and Josh. Bye, bye. Kat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to go back to listening to the piece that we've been spotlighting on this episode. And I'll be back in a few moments to close us out. Thank you for listening to this episode of Maneuvering Music. We hope this has helped you learn more about what it means to be a music education major and how you can carry those lessons in through your future. The music featured in today's episode has been Bach's Prelude and Fugue in C Major, performed on piano by Peter Bradley Fulgoni. We would like to thank him for graciously allowing the use of his recording in this episode. 
Another special thank you to Kat Ollery and Josh Spencer for appearing in today's episode and lending their thoughts and feelings to our discussion. We hope you have enjoyed this episode. My name is Carrie Sullivan, and this has been Maneuvering Music at Miami University. <laughs>